Welcome to Encyclopedia Commandrica, the segment where we go to the gatherer website and click random card over and over, and then we talk about how we would or would not use those cards in Commander. Eventually, after the heat death of our solar system and the gravitational decay of our own known universe, we would have talked about every single Magic the Gathering card in a Commander context. My co-host Nathaniel Burgess will start. Card 1. Bonds of Faith. One and a white. Enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two as long as it's a human. Otherwise, it can't attack or block. <laughs> Whoa. Hmm. Dual use auras. These are quite useful, aren't they? Yeah, it's nice that it can be used on offense or defense. Well, defense if you're using a human tribal white deck. Yeah, so this is a pacifism and a plus two plus two if you happen to have a human. Nice art, Grizzlebrand. Is that. It's not Liliana, is it? I'm not sure it's Grizzlebrand specifically. That's Grizzlebrand. Look at his big... Well, Grizzlebrand has a like a more human-colored face. He still has the horns, but I don't know what... That's Grizzlebrand. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's even got a quote from Avacyn on the flavor text. Oh, it is. Oh, it does. We cannot be destroyed. We will be bound. So says Avacyn, or the Oath of Avacyn. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not a terrible card. If you're running really suboptimal white removal, this is an option. <laughs> yeah, it shuts down a bunch of specific commanders, and it could be used as a bonus. I might, well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it in Earl the Mistalker, because he's not human. But I might use it if I made a white human tribal deck, but I don't have one of those. Micaeus the Hallowed? Micaeus the Hallowed. I don't know. There are some human commanders that have white and other colors which make them more useful, like Hannah Ship's Navigator, Xur the Enchanter, and Urtai the Corrupted are all human commanders in white with enchantment-related abilities. So those decks might want to look at this. Narset, Enlightened Shooter. She's a human and oh. is a Voltron, as is Rafik. But if you're running either of those two cards, you have no friends. Sorry, I mean, uh, if you're running over those two cards, there are probably better options for auras. Yeah, those two cards are going to get some scrutiny on the table. I'd give that a maybe. Would I run it? Maybe. Yeah. It really depends on having a human tribal deck, in my opinion. I probably agree with you there, or at least heavy humans in your creature pool. Anyway, moving along. Card number two. Mystic Barrier. It's four and a white for an enchantment. When Mystic Barrier enters the battlefield, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose left or right. So this is a commander-specific card. Each player may attack only the opponent seated nearest him or, or her in the left chosen direction and planeswalkers controlled by that player. So in, in, sorry, in the last chosen direction. So you choose left or right, you can only attack that way. Interesting. It was printed in the original Commander set, so it's specifically designed for multiplay. Yeah, it's certainly a Commander-relevant card. I like it. It's interesting. It better be, because it's been designed for Commander. Interesting story. When Back when we were first getting back into Magic, when we weren't playing Commander, but we were playing multiplayer, we played with only attack left as a rule anyway. You could cast spells any direction, but you could only attack your creatures left. Because we found games were going too quick otherwise. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It did affect the game quite a lot when we used to do that, uh, obviously. And it forced everyone's decks into being quite spell heavy. Uh, it created political situations where you'd say, no, don't kill that guy, he's the barrier before you start killing me and sort of helping <laughs> the person on your right. Well, that's politics. It is. I could imagine some people getting upset with this one where... They say this is politics being forced upon us. We're... Yeah, it gives everyone a pillow for it by casting this. Yeah, it's interesting. You can change it as well, which is quite interesting, left and right. So you get a political at the beginning of your upkeep. People can say, oh, please stop here attacking me. 
And note that it only works in multiplayer games. If you're down to one versus one, then this card does nothing. Jack all. Anyway, card number three. Oh, it's my turn. It is. Card three. Pangosaur. Two green green. Creature lizard. Six six. Oh, hey. that's, that's not a lot of mana for a six six. Yeah, it looks like a bargain. Oh, wait. Whenever a player plays a land, return Pangasaur to its owner's hand. Oh, that rhymes. It does rhyme, but it doesn't make the card more appealing. If this creature type was a duck, it wouldn't stop this card from sucking. I wouldn't play this in Animar because it has the two green in its casting cost. If it was completely colorless, it might be something for Animar, but it's not. I think it would be absolutely a card for Animar for the completely colorless, because you it actually says four mana to rack up a, a extra token on Animar. I mean, it's not totally without worth. If you had a deck that relied on other creatures entering the battlefield, then it would be okay. Do you know what I mean? If Yeah, yeah. My first thought is Animar. The casting cost is not right for him. Yeah. Well. It's got too much green in the casting cost. Lucadia Masks was a weird set, wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe we'll have to have an episode on that. It was, yeah. It it was an unpurposely powered down set because it came directly after the Urza's block. And after the Urza's block, um, Wizards of the Coast said to R&D, Screw you guys! You're turning this one down from 11. Well, maybe that would not be a good episode then. No, I think it would be... If we did one about Urza's block, it would be a tertiary note, I think. That's Pangasaur. There's got to be a way of abusing that. It's just not coming to me, so... So until then, bleep, Pangasaur. Bloop you, Pangasaur, bloop you. Anyway, card number four. Dark Watch Elves. It is two and a green for a 2-2 two -two pro-black creature elf with cycling two yeah screw you dark watch elves how dare you be <laughs> pro all my decks yeah protection from black is handy in our local meta and the cycling is convenient here if you just look at all the other players on the table and look at their commanders and hey you're not playing black nobody's playing black okay i'll cycle it bam i, I could definitely see this card being used in a uh, a budget elves deck this is absolutely an option. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can't cost a lot. It must be sense. And you might put it in a sideboard in your expensive elves deck. Yeah. Yeah, you might. Um, not that people tend to use sideboards a lot in Commander. People tend to change decks after one game, I find. But that'd be an interesting topic. Why sideboard in Commander? Yeah, this this card's all right. Like, Yeah, it's not bad. For three mana, for a 2-2, two -two is a little expensive for a bear, but... Um, pro black and cycling's probably worth one colorless, isn't it? Yeah, I play some uh, pro green because Phil's in our meta. Yeah, <laughs> protection from specific colors is useful depending on what you know the other people in your meta are likely to play. Like, let's imagine you sit down for a game of Commander and two of the people you're playing against are Phil and Nick Jaragoski. Pro green, that's your friend. Oh, yeah. If you're sitting down against me or you, pro blue or black, probably your friend, because despite what you say, you are a bit to me. Well, yeah, I'm I'm not disputing that. I think pro black is more useful than pro blue in our meta against us. As discussed before, I am I I might claim to be, um, well, I am Demir, but I used to think I was very blue, and then I looked at my decks and the way I play and realized that I'm actually very black. Very, very black. Yeah, it's an alright card. Yeah, it's handy. Anyway, moving along. Card number five. Speaking of protection from specific colors, Hibernation. Two and a blue. Instant. Return all green permanents to owner's hands. <laughs> so it's a meta-specific washout. In our meta, I'd rather just use washout for one more because Hibernation won't affect Sean. It will affect Phil, but it won't affect Sean. It'll affect my Crufix deck. Well, depends on how often you play that. Jared Garvey and Crufix, it's going to do a bit. 
It's it's okay. I mean, you haven't brought those decks against the table against me recently, though. So, oh, I brought Jared against you and you and Thacker and just destroyed you both and yeah. put him down and said that deck has reached Super Saiyan. It's reached nine thousand. So I've put him away for a little bit. He's the deck I go to when I want to win a game because I've not won one in a while. I'm like, right, okay. <laughs> Trying to trying to bring the big boy out. Yeah, we all have those decks. Yeah, we do. Uh, he's my current one of them. Garve, I'm still tinkering with, but I've got focused down a rabbit hole of building Vela the Nightclad and now Crufix God of Eldrazi at the moment. Interesting. Yeah, I like Vela the Nightclad. She looked interesting. My deck that I built around her was just not fast enough. I hope to see what uh, what you've done with it. Well, I've played you with mine. Yeah, but I haven't seen the deck list. Oh, right, okay. Well, I can buzz that out. I'll send a link to you for the show notes. I like the artwork on Hibernation, by the way, because it's one of the few cards where you see a pack of um, sleeping armadillos. armadillos. With hexagonal armor. Yeah, you don't see that enough on cards, I think. There should be more. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Uh, what... What animals would you like to see sleeping on a magic card, listeners? Send messages to at Ketjack <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, card number six, Bird Maiden. Two and a red for a one-two creature with flying. Not a lot to say here. Woohoo! She looks really happy in the picture. She does. Does it not just make you... Your heart sing. Yeah, bird tribal. Would you run this? Is there a maiden tribal deck? I don't think there is. Oh yes, a creature type is bird and maiden. Actually, let, <laughs> let me check what the what the oracle said. Should be human. I oh, know. Well, hang on. No, that would be right. She's not a bird, is she? She's a human. Clearly, from the artwork and her name. Why Nate looks at that? I'm going to read the flavor text. Four things that never meet do here unite. To shed my blood and to ravage my heart. A radiant brow and tresses that beguile. And rosy cheeks and a glittering smile. All of that's true. Quote from the Arabian Nights. Look at the picture. She's got a glittering smile. She's got a... And rosy yep. cheeks. Uh, Oracle says she's a human bird. Human and bird. That's confusing. Uh, that's weird considering bird is a slightly offensive... Word for a generic female in England. White bird. So that might be our first truly sexist card. What? Bird is a sexist, slightly derogatory, but also slightly cheeky term. Like chick. Ah, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, no. in England. I see what you're saying. White bird. She's me bird, that sort of thing. Anyway, are you running bird tribal in red? No? Okay, next. I am. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> You don't run any tribal. Uh, Eldrazi tribal? Green, blue? Card seven. <laughs> <laughs> Tangle, one green. Instant, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, and mm. each attacking creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. This is a Civic card, right? Green, blue? To no, it's just green. One and one. What? One colorless and one green. Green, get your filthy moss covered fingers out of my delicious color tappa, pie. Tappa, tappa, tappa. You got frosted, buddy. That is a, uh, a better fog, isn't it, really? I know it's one more to cast, but in Commander, you should have an extra mana at that point in the game. Yeah, this instant has the kind of timing, it could be devastating, so. Wait to play it until the effect is catastrophic. Don't play it too early. Sandbag the crap out of this card. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is a good card. I'd run this if it was inside the color square. If I really wanted a fog deck in green, then yeah, this could be used for some devastating plays. But it's a blowout, so if someone swings into you and goes, oh, attack for lethal, I don't know, create hoof behemoths or whatever, um, you tap down a lot of stuff and then try and get them back the next turn, or at least it buys you a whole turn. Well, it's like if, um, if someone is winning the game and they're attacking you, and they're attacking, well, they're attacking everyone, but they're also attacking you, and you're not the one winning, then 
it's like arch enemy you know this is the card that you're playing when you're in the three versus one card number eight jinxed idol this is two mana for an artifact uh, the beginning of your upkeep jinxed idol deals two damage to you what that sucks i hear you say but sacrifice a creature target opponent gains control of jinxed idol and the beautiful beautiful flavor text this is a zedru card it's useful in Zedru. I've seen a lot of Zedru players use it. You get it passed back to you quite a bit if you're in Zedru, but you're just going to hand it back to someone else with Zedru's ability rather than sucking one of your creatures, where it basically reads, target opponent sacrifices a creature, or they start taking damage. And if they've got it and they take the damage, you also get to draw additional cards off of Zedru in your upkeep step. Mm-hmm. Very specific, but the deck that wants it really wants it. There's also, in Mono White, the Darien, King of Self-Harm. He can use it. <laughs> the guy who uh, he takes damage and it creates 1-1 uh, one, one tokens. That guy, he, he wouldn't mind having this out here. There's got to be some other cards that want to punch themselves in the face. Stop hitting yourself. I can't think of any. Darien's a very good example, aren't they? Yeah, as long as he takes damage, then he gets tokens. Yeah, it becomes a token generator at that point that if you don't need it, you can pass off to someone else. So, moving along. Card number nine. Dark Steel Juggernaut. Five colorless mm. artifact creature juggernaut. Star Star. What? His power and toughness are what? a star star. Well, let's read the text. Dark Steel Juggernaut's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control. Dark Steel Juggernaut is indestructible and attacks each turn if able. That is a potentially great card. Oh, yeah. This has been in my Memnarch deck since version 1. I don't know how many versions I'm on, but it's a good card in any deck that uses lots of artifacts. It used to be in an earlier version of my Reaper King that used more actual artifact scarecrows and fewer changeling scarecrows. Hmm, this is in my, um, what's it called, Send Triplets deck, which tends to run a lot of artifacts. Um, fits perfectly into most Esper decks, because even if they're not artifact-themed, they tend to have more artifacts anyway, because the Esper creatures are mostly artifact creatures. And if you run a Microsynth Lattice... Game on. Kaboom. Five mana for an insanely powerful creature. It just needs trample. It's missing trample. Yeah, tough to get that in Esper. Yeah. Well, you can get it with some equipment, which would also give it a bonus. Brawler's Plate for a cheap budget one. Yeah, this is a good card. Yeah. So in an upcoming episode, we will be talking about Big Mana. Mono Blue Artifact Cheaters. And if Commander can be said to have affinity decks, like maybe Sidri Galvanic Genius or Send Triplets, they're both Esper, then those decks might try Darksteel Juggernaut. Yeah, there you go. That's Darksteel Juggernaut. And finally, card number 10, Oros the Avenger. This is three and a Mardu, so a white, black, red, for a legendary creature dragon. It's a flying 6-6. Six, six. Whenever... Aras the Avenger deals combat damage to a player. You may pay two and a white. If you do, Aras deals three damage to each non-white creature. So this is one of the cycle of ten legendary dragons that are flying six sixes that you pay three mana to do an effect when they do a combat damage to someone. Uh, other notable ones are Croesus, um, Rith the Awakener. So this is the Mardu Wedge guy. One of the weaker ones, that ability... If it was to each creature your opponent controlled, I mean, white isn't like the most prominent color in Commander. Like, if you're looking at blowing out, I was saying that with the white creatures you do see are weenie, so it'd be relevant. That's a real kick in its own teeth there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, very specific to the meta that you're playing in, because if there's another player in white at the table, then you're probably going to come in second. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of any commander that has to deal its damage to get its effect. Unless it's in red and you have haste effects. Yeah, that's not so bad. Your opponents can see it coming. But if it was when it attacked, you can pay this additional bit. That would just infinitely improve this card. 
infinitely improve this card. Well, this guy is in red, so if he is the commander of your deck, you're probably going to win haste effects. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to value haste more and more in games. It really is a quite a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. It's about as close to flash as you're going to get in red. Don't start bombarding me with lists of red cards with flash that are powerful. I know they exist. In fact, no, you can. Send me pedantic lists of red cards with flash, and you can get me at at Ketjack. At Ketjack. Send them all the stuff. Correct me there. I like um, to caster mage. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> this guy's all right. You might run him as commander in a Mardi deck that that you weren't running Zergo or Alesha in. Alicia. Al. Al who smiles at death. But why wouldn't you run those? Well, Alicia's quite know. specific. Yeah, Alicia has a... You have to build around Alicia. And Zergo, you... Well, Zergo you can build around if you include a lot of wrath effects because Zergo's going to be indestructible and, yeah, boom. Yeah, so that concludes this week's Encyclopedia Commander We hope you're all still enjoying these. See you next time.